This is the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 21. But now the righteousness of Yahweh without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. This is the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 1, and I'll read to 3. I say then, hath Yahweh cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Yahweh have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not what the scriptures saith of Elias, which is Elijah, how he maketh intercession to Yahweh against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of Yahweh unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men, a complete number of men, seven meaning completion, who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So with that, giving all praises, glory and honor unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father in whom the world has it really called Jehovah, or Yahweh, and Yahweh Shai being the name of his only begotten Son in whom the world has it really called Jesus Christ in whom we do worship. We are the Hebrew Israelites, which consist of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, and Seminole Indians to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad. Greetings, giving double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so that taught me and brothers like me this truth, this beautiful truth, beginning with the names of our power and of his anointed. Now, these are the two most important things you will ever know. The name of the Heavenly Father and the name of his only begotten son to call upon and be saved in these last and troubling times through faith. And that's why Romans 3 and 21 is so important. That's why I read it first. It says, but now the righteousness of Yahweh without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and by the prophets. What is that? Faith. Because we were without law. We were dead in trespasses and sins. What brought us back unto our power? Faith. Just like our forefather Abraham. He was in an uncircumcised state. He grew up in Ur of the Chaldees. His father, Terah, was an idol worshiper. The sons of God had fallen at that time. But yet, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yashad revealed himself unto Abram, whose name was changed to Abraham. And it began with the name. Because the Lord always... Uh, 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 lets you know he presents himself. I am the God, you know, I am the power that created heaven and earth. Okay. So when the Lord revealed himself unto Abram, he said, I'm that uh, mighty shield and great reward. And I will deal with you and your seed after you. Now, the name of the heavenly father is Yahweh, Yah, meaning he, Hawa, meaning exist or is or is to be. He is, he exists. He, the existing one, and the name of his only begotten son, a name above every name given amongst men by whom we must be saved, to the Israelite man first, and also to the believers to call upon and be saved, consisting of women, children, helps of the prophets, and those that have faith. Begin with that hopeful elect. Okay, that house of David, the beloved. Okay, the household of faith. The name of the heavenly father's son is Yahawashai, Yah meaning he, Hawashai, meaning deliverer and savior. And if uh, the son will make you free, you shall be free indeed. Let's get that. Free indeed. And I'm going to play this clip from a super book. Because our Bible is a super book, man. All right. It is the only super book. All right. It is a living document. All right. You got a lot of people hating and scoffing, but hey, that's what the scriptures say. As with the prophecy state that the land will be barren of faith. All right. Uh, shall, shall the Lord find faith on earth? OK. It said that uh, his word be even evil spoken of unto us to salvation, but to our adversaries, an evident token of their destruction. This is John 8 and 36. 
If the son, which is Yahweh Shai, therefore shall make you free, what has made us free? The truth has set us free. Ye shall be free indeed. Hmm. That's the spirit. Call all your mla, Yahweh Shai. Double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so. Double honors as it is written unto those men. Salutations, peace, and blessings unto the hopeful elect and that house of David to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Lord's one, this is an edifying lesson, and Lord's one, I call this lesson. Take the calling or the calling of your salvation, so to speak. Either or, you know, because you go into the word vocation, it means calling. Let me let me go there real quick. Vocation. Put that in. What Paul stated. Okay, vocation. All right. It's a couple. Um, well, it's just one, really. It's provocation in the other ones. Let's go to Ephesians 4. 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, beseech you, which means to beg you, that ye walk worthy of the vocation, the calling, wherewith ye are called, just like Moses was called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. That's what spirit Moses had. That's why the Lord chose him out of all men living to be his servant, to do what otherwise other men could not do. It said not many noble, not many mighty. All right. Not many uh, uh, wise or called. All right. It says endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one power and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all that governing body, that elect, that household of faith. The Lord is through us all and in us all. OK, through faith. Through the calling, we have a, a common goal. All right. As as the Shammai prayer. Shema Yasha Allah Yahawa Allah Hayanawa Yahawa Akhar, which means, which I uh, spoke in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, okay, our language, the holy tongue, the Lashawan Kudash, Lashawan meaning tongue, and Kudash meaning holy. And I said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our power is one. <laughs> That's it. Call all Yumla Yahabash Mashai. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Mashiach. Man, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men, spiritual gifts. All right, the Beatitudes, gifts in the spirit, prophecy being uh, the one that you want to desire. Then you have uh, the gift of tongues, being teachers, okay? and other things of that nature. We are in captivity physically. We're in the lands of our captivity, but yet in the lands of our captivity, we remembered ourselves. All right, and the Lord came unto us through his men, through his voice, through the prophets, through the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. And we heard, we did not turn away. We heard the Lord's voice, just like Moses heard out of the bush, the voice of Yahweh Bashim Shai and was given his mission. So without further ado, I'm going to play this clip. Shalom. I have seen how my people are suffering as slaves in Egypt. And I have heard them beg for my help because of the way they are being mistreated. I feel sorry for them. Now go, for I am sending you to the Pharaoh. You must lead my people, Israel, out of Egypt. Who am I to go to the king and lead your people out of Egypt? The Pharaoh is a harsh and godless man. Why would he listen to me? I will be with you, and you will know that I am the one who sent you when you worship me on this mountain, after you have led my people out of Egypt. But, but Let me play this clip back. This punk-ass helicopter. Salaki is flying over, like right when, you know, right when the video plays and all this noise wants to come. But let's play it back. 
See how uh, Meek Moses was? I like it. Damn, what the hell's going on? Bear with me, brothers. Bear with me. All right, I'm back, Akim. Let's play it again. I have seen how my people are suffering as slaves in Egypt. And I have heard them beg for my help because of the way they are being mistreated. Woo, and we've seen that our whole life. Like, damn, why is our people at the bottom? Like, what the fuck? Why are we over here? Where do we, where do we come from? And that's what Moses is understanding. But he knew, you know, when he came of age, he seen his people uh, suffering. And he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Let's get that. Hebrews 11. And it, it, it required faith that Moses did those things. That he left everything he knew to serve the Lord. Same with us. You know, faith will make you do yay, some remarkable things. OK, now, without further ado, let's go. This is uh, Hebrews 11 and 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. And that's beautiful because all you brethren were proper children, even though you might not have had the, the best upbringing or your father was gone or he's in prison or dead or you know you always you were a proper child why because you obeyed what the voice of yahweh you obeyed when you seen the apostles and elders you you weren't scoffing and scorning you was like what what's what? What this I, what who was that again that name you obeyed obedience is better than sacrifice how about that so you were a proper child just like moses very meek you didn't think yourself to be anything but yet Yahweh Shemashah does not see as man sees. He sees your spirit and he knew who you were. He put faith, uh, uh, he put his spirit, his fear with the faithful in the womb. It says, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of Yahweh than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Mashiach greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. I feel sorry for them. Now go, for I am sending you to the Pharaoh. You must lead my people, Israel, out of Egypt. But who am I to go to the king? And lead your people out of Egypt. The Pharaoh is a harsh and godless man. Why would he listen to me? I will be with you, and you will know that I am the one who sent you when you worship me on this mountain after you have led my people out of Egypt. But, but suppose they will not believe me or, or, or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, the Lord has not appeared to you. What is in your hand? Woo, that's it. And I'm going to stop it right there. That was beautiful. I like how they were all like surprised when the Lord said he was going to be with them. That was beautiful. Yeah, you know, that's just how our people see us. They don't really know what the hell is going on. But then they're looking like, why him? I, the hell did the Lord choose them? Them over there. Because the meekness in our, in our spirit, in our heart. We know it's the right thing to do. Like, hey, finally, something. You know, it is the right thing to do. Obedience is better than sacrifice. The Lord don't give a damn about your, the sacrifice of fools that our people are given. He needs you to obey him. Listen to him. But only the elect will listen and do what is requested of them. Call all your mind, y'all, by Shema Shai. Now, real quick, let me go to 2nd uh, uh, Edris. Uh, 14. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, second edges. 14 and 3. And it reads, Then said he unto me in the bush, I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses and talked with him when my people served in Egypt. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt and brought him up to the mount of where I held him by me a long season, 40 days and 40 nights to be exact. When you go into the history, how long Moses is on the mount. Then, then he had broke the stones because um, Jake was being wicked and worshiping a damn calf. And then he had to go up again and receive the law. It came down and, and then we made that covenant with the Lord. 
verse 5, and told him many wondrous things and showed him the secrets of the times and the end and commanded him saying, these words shalt thou declare and these shalt thou hide. So what we have is what we need to know. And we're declaring all that we know. And other things that are hidden, well, they are hidden because it is not for you to know. The things that pertain to salvation, that's what we're bringing out. Along with the history and the prophecies and what uh, befell us and the power, okay, that have been bestowed upon us and our power that shall make an everlasting covenant, a perpetual covenant with us, which he have made through the blood of his son. And by the blood and by the spirit of his son are we risen, that we're, we were once dead in trespasses and sins. We heard the calling, just like Moses. Who am I, you know? The Pharaoh is a, is a godless, a cruel and godless man. Why would he listen to me? You know? Hey, but hey, it's the words of Yahweh Bashim Shai. He will listen. Esau, Edom must listen. This world must hear the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? Moses uh, said would come. Let's see here. He said would come. Okay, so like you. Okay. Okay. And put the prophets in. Let's see there. That's when it'll pop up prophets. Bear with me, Akiya. Okay. There it is. Rocket that you have about Shimmy. I was shy. <whistles> Throughout our history, have our people wanted to kill and slay the prophets and have slain some of them and killed them and imprisoned them? All right, but hey, what did the prophets come to speak? The words of Yahweh. By Shim Yahweh Shai. This is Acts 26 and 22. Having therefore obtained help from uh, help of Yahweh. Let me read that again. Having therefore obtained help. Of Yahweh, Bashim al Shah, continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Mashiach should suffer, that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles, to our people that grew up in the customs and those of our people scattered among the nations. And that's it. What else is there? Okay. But to do the will of Yahweh. Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. To do his will. All right. So without further ado, let's put this up here. Let's put that right there. Let's put that right there. Split the screen. We're going to go to this blue letter. Well, actually, let me go to uh, Sirach, modern translation. Now let's play it. You, when you worship me on this mountain, after you have led my people out of Egypt. I like how <laughs> even the robot uh, dude was like surprised. Like, oh, snap. Like, what? Him? Like, yeah. The, word, the Lord is working a work in our days in which we would not believe, though it be told you. And it's going on right now, if you can receive it. Now, this is a book of Sirach, chapter 45, verse 1. And it reads, From Jacob's descendants, the Lord raised up a godly man who won the favor of everyone, loved by Yahweh and people alike. This man was Moses, whose very memory is a blessing. The Lord, Yahweh Bashim al made him as glorious as the angels and made his enemies fear him. There in Egypt, at his command, the disaster struck. The Lord made kings hold him in respect. The Lord gave him his commands for his people and showed him the dazzling light of his presence. The Lord chose Moses out of the whole human race and consecrated him because of his loyalty and humility. He let him hear his voice and led him into the dark cloud where face to face, 
he gave him the commandments, the law that gives life and knowledge so that Moses might teach the covenant regulations to the Israelites. And I said, that's what we're doing here now. But we were called in an unclean state as our forefather Abraham was. But through us believing, that was the beginning. Faith. Okay. Call all your lie, y'all, but my shot. All right. So let's get up out of there. Let's go to the blue letter. Okay. Bear with me, brothers. The blue letter's taking a minute to come in. Come on. All right. There we go. All right. Now we heard this word through our spiritual leaders, through the men of the Lord. Okay, we heard, we obeyed, we did not turn away the uh, the shoulder. Okay, but we uh, gave our ear to hear. I'm going to get that in Isaiah right after I read this. Hebrews 13 and 17, and it reads, Obey them that have rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give, an, uh, give account, that they may do it with joy, and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. See, we're obeying our teachers and we had need that one teach us again that we may also be teachers. You know, how, how beautiful is a uh, is uh, a word in due season? OK, how's, how's that go in the, uh, the Apocrypha? Let me get that um, ear that will hear. I think it goes like that ear will, that will hear that will hear. I believe it goes like that. That will hear. OK. Let's see here. Uh, okay. Man, Ecclesiastic Cuss 2 and 17. This is not it, but this, this is good. I'm going to bring it out. They that fear the Lord, Yahweh Bashimashah, will prepare their hearts, their minds, and humble their souls in his sight. Just like Moses. Okay. We have that same story. We left this modern Egypt. You know, esteeming the riches of Mashiach to be better than than the riches that are in Egypt. Just like as Moses seen the riches of that time, ah, whatever, man. And we see the riches of this time is nothing compared to what Yahweh Mashiach is going to give us. This is nothing. OK. So here we go. And then that will hear. Woo! Ecclesiastes cuts 25 and 9. Well, is him that have found prudence. When you go into prudence, it means to be uh, cautious, careful, of quick perception, sagacious. All right. And he that speaketh in the ears of them that will hear. <laughs> man, that's what we found. We found prudence. It said the prudent man uh, looketh well to his going. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. <laughs> oh, how great is he that findeth wisdom. Woo! Yet is there none above him that feareth the Lord. But the love of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Hashem, passeth all things for illumination. Just like that burning bush. It was burning. But the wisdom and the ways and the will of Yahweh Bashim Hashem was greater than that of that, that fire, that flame. All right. Because what did the Lord show Moses? Took him a long season and showed him the, 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 the times, signs, things that would come. As we read, the Lord have showed us the same thing through the word. We were taught, you know, we were tutored until the appointed time of the father to give us everything we would need in this time. Well equipped, having the whole armor of Yahweh Bashim Hashai to face the enemy head on. But yet having a humble spirit enough to know that the power is not ours and that the victory is not ours, but only through Yahweh Bashim Hashai do we have the power and the victory. Our victory over this world is even our faith that Yahweh Shai Mashiach is the son of Yahweh. <laughs> this is the fear of the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Shai is the beginning of his love and faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. <laughs> As what Moses did, he began to cleave unto the Lord at this moment, even though he's like, well, I can't do it. I can't speak. I can't do this, that and the third. But the Lord said he would give him. Word the words to speak. We have the words of eternal life with us. We speak the words of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. We have nothing to fear. 
the rocket that Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai. And that's it. That's what I wanted to get. Man, it's Baruch 4 and 30. Take a good heart, a good mind. O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. For he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. That's right. That's right. Call all yum la. That's right. Okay. That's it. Okay. That's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. That's right. Okay. That's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to get from there. I was seeing if there was any more. But I guess not. All right. So put calling in. Okay. And then we're going to get up out of there and we're going to go. I don't think. Did I finish reading that out? I don't think I did. Now, this is Hebrews 13 and 17 in LT. Obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls. And they are accountable to Yahweh. Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That's us giving double honors unto our teachers and actually obeying them and listening to them and doing as they do. As Paul said, follow me even as I follow Hamashiach. It says, give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be for your benefit, right? These videos that the apostles do, them going out into the highways and byways, it benefited us more than we know. And now brethren, heads of the camps, brothers, you know, believers coming in is benefiting uh, uh, them and their families and their lives, even though to our people it looks foolish and stupid or whatever. But they're they're foolish and they're stupid and they've been blinded. And if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Even to you uh, uh, helps of the prophets and you sisters, whether you be married to a man of the Lord or waiting to receive that man. Is not your life benefited? By what Yahweh Bashimah Shah has done through his men. Come on. Yeah, you're being chastised, but that's a good thing. Yeah, you're going through the furnace of affliction, but that's a good thing. Yeah, you've been severed from this world, but that is a good thing. Because the world to come is far better. It's Hebrews 13 and 18. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience. And all things willing to live honestly. Hebrews 13 and 18, pray for us, for our conscience is clear that we want to live honorably in everything we do. And that's beautiful because Moses, before he was called, he was living in Midian. He had married uh, Sipporah. Uh, his father-in-law, Jephro, was the ruler of that, that region. And he had a, a quiet life. It was a good life. And what was he? A shepherd. But that's what exactly what the Lord was calling a shepherd. To shepherd his people because the Lord is our shepherd we shall not want. He maketh us to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth our souls. Call all yum la, ya bashimashai. The Lord is our shepherd we shall not want. Lack. There you go. So Moses was living that quiet life. But let me get that real quick. Real quick. Uh, content. You know. Let's get that. It's like it. Content. In L, uh, let's go to the New Testament first. There's a point here I want to find. Hey, babe, like uh, Paul said, this Philippians 4 and 11. Now that I speak in respect of want and in respect of lack, for I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content, to be fine, to be cool with what you have. But godliness with contentment, this is First Timothy 6 and 6. It says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Is 1 Timothy 6 and 8. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. You're being cool. You're good. You collect it. All right. Man. Hebrews 13 and 5. Let your conversation, the way you live, be without covetousness and be content with such things as he have. For he have said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. See, the Lord said that. But we're not a. Uh, uh, leave us nor forsake us. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's pretty much it for the New Testament. Let's go to the Apocrypha. 
Okay. Man. Bear with me, brothers. Let's find it. There we go. There it is. Man. It's Ecclesiasticus 40 and 18. To labor. Because when I read uh, what I read earlier at the beginning of this lesson um, is not of works, you know, going into it said the righteousness of the, of the Lord came not, you know, without law. All right. But through the prophets and the uh, or through the prophets and the law, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, there is works, though, that you must do. Faith without works is dead. Right. But it has to be godly works it has to be works through faith, not just, you know, Thinking you living a good life. I'm a good man. Or I'm good. What what dictates good. You know. What the scriptures say. Is what dictates what's good and what's evil. Alright. And, and you keeping the law. You got other camps out here. Uh, the law, the law, the law. But they don't keep it. And we can't keep it perfectly. But the two laws that hang all the law. You can keep that. You can love. Uh, you can love Yahweh Bashim Yashar with all your might. And soul and strength. And you can love your neighbor, those that are doing the work, those that do the will of the Father. You can love them as yourself. It's very easy to do. Okay? But many have been corrupted by filthy lucre or, or they don't believe or they doubt or whatever the hell. Okay? But I'm telling you, you brethren listening and you sisters and you believers, be content on what you have. Because Moses was content in the land of Midian. Before the Lord called him, but the Lord said, I'm sending you to speak unto Pharaoh and to deliver my people and bring them to this mountain where I am. OK, man. And we were all called the same way. Like, I don't know if I can do that. But you had that 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 uh, that childlike mind. You had that humble mind like, well, if the Lord is willing to use me, use me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and let's read this. Ecclesiastes 40 and 18. To labor and to be content with that a man hath is a sweet life. But he that finds the treasure woo, is above them both. Now, what is this treasure? We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Woo! Man. <whistles> to labor and to be content. That is a good life. Now, let's go. Uh, what is that? Second address uh, nine. Those that are going to be saved. By what? Their faith and by what? Something else. Their works. This is second address nine and seven. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape, escape these dangers, these evils, these perils, by his works and by faith, whereby he have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils, and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning, the elect. That's it. Call on him law. Y'all about your mashah. Hence works. You got to do something. A man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom. Once you work, work your work be times. For the night cometh when no man can work. So work, you know. Do what is requested of you. Okay. Call on him law. Y'all about your mashah. Chosen. Called to do what is requested? Barakat Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. Now let's get up out of there. Let's go to this blue letter and let's keep reading. Verse 19, Hebrews 13 and 19. But I beseech you, which means to beg, that rather to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. And especially pray that I will be able to come back to you soon. Hey, Barakat Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, that we can still watch the, the, the lessons, the lives of the apostles and brothers and elders do. For now, because it's building us up and the brothers that are out there that are actually um, laboring and doing the will and works of Yahweh Bashim al -Shai, may you be blessed. And you sisters that help the, the ministry and make garments for brothers, may you be blessed. And those of you that, that, that uh, help financially, may you be blessed. And those that just have faith and believe and call upon the name because of your faith, may you be blessed. All right. Pray for us. It says, he, this is Hebrews 13 and 20. Now the power of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord, Yahweh Shai, that great shepherd of the, of the sheep. You read that again. Now the power of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord, Yahweh Shai, that great shepherd of the, 
uh, gre- uh, <laughs> man, I'm getting excited. Tongue twisted. God dang. That great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. It says, now the power of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord, Yahweh Shai, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Let's read that in the NLT. Now may the power of peace who brought up from the dead, our Lord, Yahweh Shai, the great shepherd of the sheep and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood. <laughs> Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you. That which is well pleasing in his sight through Yahweh Shai Mashiach, to whom be glory forever and ever a month. So it be true. Okay. Let's read in the NLT. May he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Yahweh Shai Mashiach every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. A month, so it'd be true. And that's it. That is it. Okay. So let's play this back a little bit. Okay, right there. Is Moses talking to a plant? Shh. Look, the bush is on fire, but it's not burning up. I have seen how my people are suffering as slaves in Egypt. And I have heard them beg for my help because of the way they are being mistreated. I feel sorry for them. Woo! So back then in the past, the Lord saved our whole nation because they begged for his help because they were being mistreated. But now it is, it is the elect that are crying to the Lord and begging for his help. Because we're being mistreated, not only by Esau, Edom, the heathen, this ugly ass world, but by our own people, two thirds. So the Lord is going to help his elect and those that shall be saved by their works and by faith, wherein we have believed. You see that? It all starts with faith. It's all about faith. Let's get that in uh, first John. Was it? Uh, was it five? Yeah. Going into uh, even our faith. Now let's read it in the NLT versions. First, First John 5 and 4. For every child of Yahweh defeats this evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. <laughs> Verse 5. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Yahweh Shai is the son of Yahweh. And Yahweh Shai Mashiach was revealed as Yahweh's son by his baptism in the water and by shedding his blood on the cross, not by water only, but by water and blood. And the spirit who is truth confirms it with his testimony, with the, the prophecy that the Lord was meant to do that. He's supposed to come on the scene and do just that. Through his stripes, we are healed. OK. That's it. Call all your mind, y'all, but you shy. We were sprinkled uh, with blood, just as Moses sprinkled the people with the first covenant. We were sprinkled under the blood of Mashiach in this new covenant. All right, and just like how you had to uh, wash yourself, uh, 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 our people washed themselves to prepare uh, to meet the Lord on the mount. But our people got too afraid and said, "Moses, you, 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 uh, speak to the Lord, and we'll listen." So now the middleman between us and our power is Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and He washed us. With the word. You see just how our people washed and prepared themselves. We're washing ourselves and preparing ourselves to meet. Yahweh Bashim Hashai says those that are pure in heart shall see Yahweh. So that's what we're doing here and now. Call all Yimla. Yahweh Bashim Hashai. Hear the call. Hear the calling. Okay. So without further ado. Let's play this. Now go. For I am sending you to the Pharaoh. You must lead my people, Israel, out of Egypt. But who am I to go to the king and lead your people out of Egypt? The Pharaoh is a harsh and godless man. Why would he listen to me? Woo! Why would he listen to me? Call <laughs> Oh, uh, gain say nor resist. Let's get that. That's why. 
even if they hate us, you know, and don't listen to us, hey, the word still stands. It is what it is. You can you can leave it or take it. It don't really matter. Man. Okay. Now this is uh, you know, Moses was is hated on, but but the Lord put the fear of him upon the kings and the people of the power that he gave him. All right, but um Let's start at verse 12, but this is what happened to the disciples. This is what shall happen to some of us. Okay, but hey, we're going to keep moving. We're going to keep going. Call all you mla. Yahweh Luke 21 and 12. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being bound. So like you're being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. What does it say? Uh, uh, Touch not my prophets. Uh, touch not my anointed to do my prophets no harm. There you go. It says, but before all this occurs, there will be a time of great persecution. You will be dragged into synagogues and prisons and you will stand trial before kings and governors because you are my followers. You see that? And it shall turn to you for a testimony. What is the testimony of Yahweh Shai Mashiach? Spirit of prophecy. This must happen. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. Woo! Call, uh, call all your blah. Yahweh Bashimel Shai. To settle it, therefore, in your hearts and your minds, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. See, Moses is like, well, but who am I? And the Lord said, I'm going to be with you. It's pretty. I'm going to be with you, and you will know that I am the one who sent you when you worship me on this mountain, after you have led my people out of Egypt. <laughs> and the surprise, like, what? Him? Do? Yes. Exactly that. This is Luke 21 and 14, NLT. So don't worry in advance about how to answer the charges against you. For I will give you the right words and such wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to reply or refute you. Woo! Now let's read it in the KJV. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Woo! That's it. Call all yumla. Yahabash Mashai. We didn't turn away. Let's go to uh was it Isaiah? You know, the uh, the uh the road of a prophet, the, the, the journey of a prophet, the destiny of a prophet. Uh was it was it fifty? Was it fifty and four? Fifty, yeah, fifty and four. Okay. Let's go here. The Lord's obedient servant. Obedient servant. Obedience is better than sacrifice. <laughs> hey, but we are also offering the sacrifice, our bodies as living sacrifice, a testament, right? The Lord's obedient servant says, The Lord Yahweh, Bashim al Shai power, have given me the tongue of the learned. That's what he gave to Moses. But since Moses wasn't as good as speaking, to our people, Aaron spoke, okay? But Moses spoke before Pharaoh because he knew the Egyptian language. He was raised up knowing it, okay? But the Lord gave him the words to speak. It says, The Lord Yahweh Bashmashai power have given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary, our people, okay? The elect. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear. Has the learned. The sovereign Lord, Yahweh Shemashai, has given me his words of wisdom so that I know how to comfort the weary. Morning by morning, he wakens me and opens my understanding to his will. May, uh, as it tells you in Job, when your uh, deep sleep falls upon man, the Lord puts into him his instructions. All right. So Isaiah 50 and 5. The Lord, Yahweh Shemashai, power have opened mine ear. I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Says the sovereign Lord, Yahweh, has spoken to me, and I have listened. I have not rebelled or turned away. And that's what you got to do. That's what the elect is doing. They have not turned away. This is Isaiah 50 and 6. It's a very uh, rough road, a tough life. That's why Jonah ran, but hey, he still had to do what he had to do. Is Isaiah 15 and 6. I gave my back to the smiters. 
and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. Yeah, they, they, they abused, and, uh, abused the prophets, man, and misused them. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. This is, this is beautiful. I offered my back to those who beat me. Just like the disciples, they were beaten with rods. And, hey, Paul was beaten in prison, done wrong by the heathen, by his countrymen, shipwrecked, all types of things. I offered my back to those who beat me and my cheeks to those who pulled off out my beard. So like it. I did not hide my face from mockery and shitty. So like it. All right, I'm back, Akim Salakia, for that. I'm back. Okay, all right. Let's keep reading. It says, it's Isaiah 50 and uh, 7. For the Lord, Yahweh Bashimah Shah Powell, will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint. And I know that I shall not be ashamed. How about that? See that? You ain't going to be ashamed. Of what we're doing, we're doing a very great thing. We're serving the master of the universe, the hell and death and destruction and everybody else is coming against us. What the hell do they know? All right. What do they know? They're the fools. Only a fool has said in his heart that there is no power. And there's a very powerful thing happening here in this earth. Begin with that hopeful elect, that household of faith. Great things happen when you have faith. Nations were subdued through faith. The uh, people were brought back from the dead through faith. We walk through the sea through faith. Hey, that's the spirit. All types of things happen by faith. Okay? Whoever speaks against it is an idiot and a fool and doesn't know a damn thing. And I have to say it just like that. It's Isaiah 50 and 7. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone, determined to do his will. And I know... I will not be put to shame. <laughs> Verse 8. He is near that justifieth me who will contend with me. Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. NLT. He who gives me justice is near. Who will dare to bring charges against me now? Question. Where are my accusers? Question. Let them appear. <laughs> Verse 9. Behold, the Lord Yahweh Bashmashai Power will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. Sit. See, the sovereign Lord, Yahweh Shai, is on my side. Who will declare me guilty? All my enemies will be destroyed like old clothes that have been eaten by moths. It's beautiful. Barakatai Yahweh Shai. For that. Man. It says, who is among you that feareth the Lord, Yahweh that obeyeth the voice, which is uh, the prophets of his servant, that walketh in darkness, we once walked in darkness, and have no light, let him trust in the name woo, of Yahweh, Bashmah and stay upon his God, his God, you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, and Seminole Indians, here, and only the elect will stay upon his God. And no longer stay upon him that smote them. Who is among you? Who among you fears the Lord Yahweh Mashai and obeys his servant? If you are walking in darkness without a ray of light, trust in the Lord Yahweh Mashai and rely on your God. That's it. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. A few more scriptures. See where we at. Not bad. Let's go to calling. Get these scriptures on calling. And we can close this thing out. All right. And we'll start. Man. This is, uh, we were baptized in the word. We were baptized through the spirit. In Mashiach. We did not, uh, we did not turn from shame and spitting. We were not rebellious. We gave our ear. We heard, right? As we read in Isaiah, this is Acts 22 and 16. And now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai. It's Romans 11 and 29. For the gifts and calling of Yahweh are without 
repentance. Woo! 1 Corinthians 1 and 26. But ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But you were called. 1 Corinthians uh, 7 and 20. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Ooh, man. That's right. Keep that faith that you first had when you came in. Remember it. Hold on to it. Trust in it. See it. You know, it says uh, this is Ephesians. One and 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. We understand that now, man. <sighs> Ephesians four and four. There is one body and one spirit. We already read this earlier, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. <laughs> Philippians 3 and 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Yahweh in Mashiach Yahweh Shai. <laughs> Second Thessalonians 1 and 11. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. <laughs> Man. 1 Timothy 1 and 9, who have saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, as, as, as uh, Abraham was called. Not according to our works, not according to his works, but he called him according to the, his purpose and grace, which was given us in Mashiach Yahushai before the world began. Mm. It's Hebrews 3 and 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. And that's it. That's all. That, that's it. So uh, what else did I want to get? Uh, I believe that was it. For this, at least. Um, hmm. let me see what I want to get. Okay. What do I want to get? I want to get something to end it. Uh, bear with me, brothers. Bear with me. Bear with me. Hmm. Let's play the clip, though. But let me, do I want to go to the blue letter? Is there something there? Now let's play this clip. Out of Egypt. Let's go. <laughs> Just set free. <whistles> Prize of the high calling, man. Push towards the mark. You know? Oh, um, by putting me into the ministry. There we go. Putting me. Putting me. Mm. Romans 15 and 15, nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of Yahweh. That's what we do these these uh, videos and we really get into it and adamant and, you know, and, and, and uh, we have passion behind it. Because, hey, it was given unto us freely. We give it unto you freely, but we weren't it wasn't sugar coated to us or nicely g given to us or spoken we were cursed out because we were off. So, yeah, the Lord winked at our ignorances, but commands all men everywhere, the Israelite man, to repent. Okay? This is our first Timothy uh, 1 and 12. It says, Paul's gratitude for Yahweh's mercy. All right? I thank Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, our Lord, who have enabled me, but that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. That's it. I thank Mashiach Yahweh Shai, our Lord, who has given me strength to do his work. He considered me trustworthy and appointed me to serve him. Man. That's it. That's beautiful, man. That's it. <whistles> I am chief. Man. Let's keep on going. 
Because we were once uh, blasphemers or injurious persons, <laughs> right? First Timothy 1 and 13. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious? But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Even though I used to blaspheme the name of Mashiach in my insolence, I persecuted his people. But Yahweh had mercy on me because I did it in ignorance and unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. Okay. It says, uh, oh, how generous and gracious our Lord was. He filled me with the faith and love that come. From Yahweh Shai Mashiach, or from Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Yep. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Mashiach Yahweh Shai came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Mashiach Yahweh Shai came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them all. Yeah, we were really doing bad. We were down bad, like the brother in London says. But the Lord gave us mercy and a chance, you know. But it was all uh, preordained. But still, call all you mlaya, bashim ashai. First Timothy 1 and 16. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to, it, to, everlast, to life everlasting. Woo! But Yahweh had mercy on me so that Mashiach Yahweh Shai could use me as a prime example of his great patience with even the worst sinners. Then others will realize that they, too, can believe in him and receive eternal life. Man, verse 17. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise power, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen, so it be true. All honor and glory to Yahweh forever. And ever, he is the eternal king, the unseen one, who never dies. He alone is power. Amun. So it be true. Barakatai Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's it. Uh, what else? I believe that was it for now. Um, mortal thoughts. Let's get that uh, in the modern translation. And we out of here. Uh, let's get up out of here. Mortal thoughts. Let's go here. Hear your calling, brethren. Okay, we're going to go to um, Second Ezra's. Second Ezra's uh, 14 and 14. Okay. Madness right there. Okay. Damn. Uh, Renaissance paintings, crap. That's all it is. All right, let's start right here. This is uh Second Edges 14 and 13. So set your house in order, warn your people, comfort those who are humble, and teach those who are wise. Then say goodbye to this mortal life. Woo! These have uh, put off the mortal and put on the immortal. It says put earthly cares away from you. Throw down your human burdens. Lay aside your weak human nature. Put all your anxieties aside and get ready to leave this world quickly. You have seen many evil things already, but far worse things are about to happen. So like you for the noise. Got this street sweeper out here. All right. Now let's read that again. You have seen many evil things already. But far worse things are about to happen. As the world grows older and weaker, the evils that will come upon its people will multiply. Troop will depart and falsehood will draw even nearer. The eagle you saw in your vision is just about to arrive. That's it. I replied, let me speak in your presence, Lord. I am ready to depart as you have commanded. And I will warn the present generation. But who will warn the people who have not yet been born? This world is a dark place. And its people have no light. But now the light have shined. The same light have shined in our hearts. Right? 
It says, your law has been destroyed by fire, so no one can know what you have done in the past or what you are planning to do in the future. Because, uh, you know, the books had to be rewritten, you know, the many manuscripts, right? But these words uh, reign true. Please send your Holy Spirit to me so that I can write down everything that has been done in the world, in this world, from the beginning, everything that was written in your law. Then in these last days, people, our people, will be able to find the right way and obtain life if they want to, if they lack the, the opportunity. We have found life in these scriptures, in our calling. We have found our purpose. Barakatha Yahweh. We have found our purpose. We have found true life. Okay. Woo. So I'm going to end it on this. Uh, was that Ephesians 6? And we're going to close our Ephesians. Uh, was it 6 or 4? 4. Is it 3? Bear with me, brothers. Okay. Yep, here it is. Man, Ephesians 3 and 19. May you experience the love. I'm going to read in the NLT. May you experience the love of Mashiach, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from Yahweh. Man, now, now I'm going to read it in the KJV. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church. That's that that's that uh, elect. That's that governing uh, uh, that household of faith and the governing body is a part of that, too. Unto him be glory in the church by Mashiach Yahweh Shai throughout all ages, world without in a month. So it be true. So with that, giving all praises, glory and honor unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash, for whom we do function, double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so. That taught me and brothers like me this truth, this beautiful truth, beginning with the names of our power and of his anointed. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and the name of his only begotten Son is Yahweh Shai. You must call upon these names when you pray. Call upon these names and see and know the power thereof. Salutations, peace, and blessings unto the hopeful elect, that house of David. To you brothers out there fighting this good fight of faith, Shalom, keep it up. To you sisters doing that which is becoming a women, Shalom. And to those that are addicted unto this ministry, Shalom. Lord, when you have been edified, until the next time I say Shalom, Lord, he that is able to exceeding abundantly all, above all that we ask or think, the Lord is about to do great things among those that have faith. We just need but see it. And we are seeing it now in the spirit. But how much more when it manifests physically? Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim, Rakakudash, Barakatum, Shalom, on to the next one.